Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures. Um, today we're going to be uh, continuing with learning different optical terminology and ways to describe optical systems um, in the hopes of really getting system design down well enough to uh, understand how to build a zoom lens. Remember when we talk about an optical system, we're talking about uh, essentially a black box that may have multiple optical elements inside it spaced by varying amounts of spacing as I've shown in the red box right here. Last time we learned how to describe optical systems in terms of their ABCD matrix, which was very good when you considered uh, one ray coming in and wanted to know exactly what that ray was going to do on the way out. Um, today we're going to look at sort of more historical way of describing optical systems. Uh, again, an optical system has an input plane and an output plane, and you have to realize that um, it's been fairly recently in the history of optics that we've had ways to do these calculations precisely and to do ray tracing. Even the polynomial approach that we first learned um, was quite difficult when you had multiple optics because the algebra was just so hard and tedious. But optics has been an important field and is much older than electronics or many other disciplines. Uh, it goes back to the time of the ancients and astronomy. And certainly um, over the last 500 years, the ability to make telescopes and optical systems has been of importance not just for research, but also for strategic and military importance. And so it's been a fairly deep and active field. And so for that reason, a lot of the terminology we use in optics has a long history um, that goes back before the time people could do calculations well. And what we're talking about today are called cardinal points. And this is, I don't want to say the word holdover because cardinal points are still used, but cardinal points were a way of describing optical systems in a general sense uh, so people could understand how rays propagated through them uh, and do pencil and paper drawings when they just couldn't do uh, long calculations as easily as we can today. So let's take a look at what cardinal points are. There are three different types of cardinal points, and we hope by the end of this mini-lecture you'll understand sort of what cardinal points mean, why they're useful, and how to be able to calculate them. Um, so our optical system has two sides, and in the terminology of cardinal points, uh, what we typically call the input plane on the, on the left side is side number one, and the output plane on the right side of the optical system we're going to define is side number two. There's a sign convention in that any distance or spacing that goes to the right is defined to be positive, and any distance or spacing that goes to the left is defined to be negative. And we talk about cardinal points 1 that correspond to side 1 and 2 that correspond to side 1, but in both these cases, left is positive, excuse me, right is positive and left is negative. So let's take a look at some cardinal points. The easiest cardinal point to understand is something we've encountered quite a bit, which are the focal points. Um, the focal point uh, number one is for a ray coming in to side number two, sort of going backwards to an optical system. And when it gets bent by this optical system and it crosses the optical axis, the point it intersects the optical axis is defined to be F1. Uh, F1 is the first cardinal point of the system. It's the focal point on side number one of the system a ray that comes in from the usual direction from the left into side number one and comes out of side number two, the place it crosses the optical axis is defined to be the second focal point, point F2. Pretty straightforward, just where the rays cross the optical axis. Uh, slightly more difficult, but not really that much more difficult, are the principal planes. The principal rays are planes are where rays appear to bend in the system. So let's look at the principal plane for the ray coming in over here into side two and coming out of side number one and crossing the F1 um, cardinal point here. If you draw straight lines, and that's shown by the dashed lines here, and extend the input ray and extend the output ray, the place they cross right here is defined to be the principal plane H1, principal plane for side number one. Notice we extend this down here and we hit point H1. Similarly, um, if we take a ray coming in from the left, and it comes out of side number two on the right. Uh, it comes in straight. We extend this point along. We trace the ray backwards from the output of the system, and the place it crosses the optical axis is defined to be the second principal plane. The way I like to think about this is sort of the bending point in a Bode plot, sort of the corner frequency, uh, the place where that happens, where these rays appear to cross if they were to go straight and turn, which, of course, we know they don't in an optical system. 
but if they were, these are defined to be the principal planes. And this is this is pretty straightforward. This is pretty simple to understand. Um, 